Welcome everyone, here we are in Evergreen Meadows. It's the southernmost neighborhood of Evergreen, which is also unincorporated. It gives its residents a little more freedoms than some parts of Evergreen, where those homeowners might be a little more restricted to what they can do. If you wanna know more about this, stay tuned. Boom, up top. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sean and I'm Josh. And we are two of the members of the Moxie Denver team, a real estate team here in Colorado. We work the front range, we work the foothills, we help you out, and we make videos about what it's like to live in these areas. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest hotness, those new videos that we put out, make sure you hit subscribe and then like it. And then, yeah, also <laughs> maybe hit that bell and you'll be notified each time. You guys are always asking us for more vlogs, more neighborhood tours, and we got you one here today. So let's get into Evergreen Meadows first, making sure you understand exactly where we are. Like Josh said, the southernmost neighborhood of Evergreen, Colorado. You got Highway 73, which cuts right through the neighborhood, which will take you quickly, you know, 15 minutes max to Evergreen downtown and then maybe like 15 20 minutes down 285 to get back to the front range 15 minutes to red rocks so out here in evergreen meadows every parcel of land is over two acres so you're getting definitely more land bigger bang for your buck if some would say but with that you're also sitting on well and septic so you are kind of by yourself no city maintenance on any of your utilities coming in except for power and it is called the Meadows because there are a lot of flat areas around here, which is great because one of the biggest obstacles in building a house in the mountains is the terrain. So not only do you have two acres, but you have two relatively flat acres, especially where we're at today. It's easy access to anything you want to do out here. You're not putting your house on the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. which is going to cost quite a bit to build that. You can enjoy the nice, flat, usable land that you can run around, play yard games, enjoy yourself out here, ride ATVs, shoot bow and arrow, but usable flat land. Yep. There is an HOA, but it's a voluntary HOA. So with that, I consider it the party planning committee. This HOA pretty much is bringing the community together. They're not really restricting you from what you can do on your own land. They're just trying to get everyone in the community involved in outdoor activities at least once a month. They're gonna have 4th of July parties, Easter egg hunts, they'll try to do trunk or treating. They want to be involved with everyone here, but they also aren't going to tell you what you can and can't do. Their only little restrictions that they're trying to give you is not allowing you to do an entire full fenced yard. They, they'll allow you to do dog runs, even small sections fully fenced off, but they give you that one restriction only because we have wildlife. We're going to have elk herds and deer herds moving through this meadow because they have access to water, green grass, and breeding area, so that neighborhood doesn't want you to stop that herd from moving through. And it's beautiful. I mean, you're a part of nature, so you want the wildlife coming through. Behind me, you see the hills, the rock outcroppings, and all the things. All of it. There are only 500 or less homes. The homes that are here are the homes that are here. But the nice thing about that is each home is unique because of the layout of the train we have here. No home's gonna be the same. If you pass your neighbor all the way down the street to the other end, you're not gonna see an identical home. Each one is individual. Yeah, and you're in luck. At the end of this video, we're gonna show you a listing that we have coming live, which is one of the original homesteads in Evergreen. So it has some very historic sections of the house and some more recent updates to the house. So definitely stay to the end to see that because I couldn't believe that at one point there were 12, 12 children kids, 12 living, kids in, this living home. in this spot. It's gonna blow your mind. Josh lives over here, so he knows everything there is to know about the meadows, uh, born and raised pretty much in the meadows, right? Whole life. But you're in the mountains, but you said like, you're like 15 minutes from anything. And so you still have like local shops, restaurants, things like that. What are some of the places that you go to around here? I, you know, 10 minutes down the road, you have access to King Super's grocery store, uh, Safeway's grocery store. But then there's also kind of big town amenities right here in Aspen Park, just 10 minutes down the road. You know, you can buy furniture, you can replace a fireplace. You want to buy a jacuzzi, the store's right there as well. If you just also want to go have a night out with the family, there's good restaurants, good bars. 
And then if you're really doing big purchases, big commercial stuff, 20 minutes in any direction, you're back down to the Front Range or downtown Evergreen, deep Evergreen if you need to go to the I-70 area, and you're still getting big commercial item stuff that you wanna buy. Big old Home Depot runs, any of that major upgrades you want, Costco's big purchase bulk, any of that is just 25 minutes at the max down the road. Right, and because all the homes are so unique in this area, and things like terrain, views, acreage, all that comes into account when talking about pricing, you're probably looking at the low end, 650, right? Like yeah. the lowest. That like would the, be the lowest home. Yeah, least expensive. But then just well over million dollar properties with you know great views, updated features. It's also why you need a guide like us to help you out because we know all the nuances of these neighborhoods and of these roads and of these homes, the things that you need to be looking at to make sure that you're getting the best deal. All right, now let's check out this house built in, on, on record, 1913. 1930. 1930. You get the original log cabin area, which this is probably, well, like 500 square feet. Yeah. Tops. And there was a family of 12 in this. Like, oh, how times have changed uh, for the better. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay, let's go check that out right now. on the original homestead, the original log here. They've added two more additions to this house, but I just wanted to point out how nice these logs have been preserved. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit that bell. We always are putting up new stuff every week. And if you're moving out here to Colorado, shoot us a text, give us a call. We're always here to help. Till next time.